we have the classifier here um, to the whole food association. We're classifying the cows, is what we call it. Basically, is what that is, is um, judging their type or giving them confirmation, like a score on different traits on their, uh, on their, on their type traits. G give them different scores on their type traits. So we have Tim Abrahamson back here. He's from the Holstein Association. And uh, this is something we do Every seven months they come around to your area and they do it in your area. You can do it anytime as a special, but um, that's what we're doing. Is uh, just classifying today. Right now we're on our two year olds and that's the last pen. We got 400 and some done. And we're gonna have Tim explain in a few minutes about how, how, how he does his job and what he's looking for and the different breakdowns and things like that, so. My mom has done most of this with the classifier, Tim, and I've, I've been helping a little bit, but she likes doing it, and uh, basically, she's got the information more at hand than I do. Cool. That was 14.76? There is pretty much for- 85 points, two year old. In a row that there was a lot of 85s and 87s. Uh, 1476 is milking. Hundred and twelve. Fresh in March. December. March. No, wait a second. March. March. So basically, 85 points. 85 to 89 is very good, and 90 and above is excellent. The highest a cow has ever scored is 97. Uh, 80 to 84 would be good plus, and then 76. Uh, 70. How is that? 80, 80 to 84 is good plus, so it would be 75 to 79 would be good. I'll let you do those loose ones and then we'll come back through and do these. Yeah. So basically is what Tim's got is a computer in his hand. And it has, I don't know, he he'll tell you. It must have 50 different numbers you gotta put in for each for each animal. How many different numbers is there for each animal, Tim? Total would be 25. 25. 20 linear traits and five major traits. Okay. And they're actually about ready to melt this pen, so we gotta hurry up and get them done. Probably within a half hour they'll be taking them. This is something that a lot of people don't do anymore, but we like doing it just to have it on the pedigree and just to know what the cow was scored. I know a lot of people don't classify anymore, but we feel it's worth it. And uh, it's the reason we do it. evaluating their strengths and weaknesses and trying to identify places where Brian is doing a really good job breeding his cows 
can also identify places where he can improve and make his herd even better. So we just pulled out a cow here just to look at to give an example of, of a, a good example of breeding here with Brian. This is a cow that's, uh, so she is classified 85 points as a young cow, which is a really good number. So classification is where we look at several different traits on the cow and give them a numerical score. And all of those lead up to assigning them a final numerical score, which, score which we use to rank the cows against their herd mates. So her being at 85 points, that makes her in the top 10% of the breed. So she's one of the better Holstein cows out there uh, in the country right now, really. So uh, this guy right here, some of the stuff we're looking at, let me stand up here, where she really excels is she has a really nice frame. She's a cow with a lot of width and power to her throughout. And you can tell she really melts. She has a lot of openness. When you stick your fingers between her ribs, you can fit about three fingers and there's a lot of openness and sweep coming back from her fore rib to her rear rib. As well as that, she also has a really well attached shutter. Uh, really strong in her attachment. As you can see here, her rear rudder is extremely high. It's a really well attached shutter, which the advantage of this, you probably wonder why, what's the point of all of it. But a cow like this is going to make a lot of milk. She's going to make a lot of milk for a long time. She's really built to last. So what we're trying to do here is make more cows like her and improve the herd so that we can make more milk and uh, do it with better cows because uh, it's efficiency and it's so classification when it comes down to it it's all about herd improvement so this cow is a good example of what we're aiming for so we're done how many cows, how many cows can we do here 500. We scored right on the On the dot. 500. Right <laughs> yeah. Wow. So we scored 500 cows. That's pretty much everybody. So the last so, two days we scored 500 cows. Yeah, and mom helped with most of them. I just been helping uh, finish up and helped a little bit yesterday, but she really likes doing this. I do too, but I was busy doing something else. So, Tim, big classifier and would recommend classifying your cows if you had registered cows. So, can you score if you don't have registered cows? No. No. Only, no. yeah, I didn't think so. Registered, registered breeders to, uh, to care about their cows, what they look like, just trying to make better cows. What it comes yeah. Okay, so Tim's going to explain a little bit about a cow that we just scored and why she scored different than the cows next to her. So, example here of a cow that uh, really, a cow we really like, her ability to make milk, and really a nice uttered cow. Something we're looking at here, we're looking at how wide she is when you look at a rear rudder from behind. She just has so much width right at the top and a really high in her attachment too. And there's something, when we're looking at this, we're kind of ranking them versus each other and the strengths and weaknesses of the different cows. So if you look at these cows next to each other, you see she excels so much in her rear rudder width and you compare her to the cow next to her. The cow here, you'd maybe like to see just a little more rear rudder width. So it's just kind of comparing and seeing not every cow is made the same and different cows need different uh, things to make them better. So when you're going out and you're mating and you're selecting different bulls to breed these cows to, this cow right here, you're probably going to want to breed her for more rear at her width because that's a good, something that this cow needs. And every cow has different strengths and weaknesses. So part of the idea of herd improvement is that we're identifying those weaknesses and we're better able to mate those cows and improve the next generation of cows. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one. And here we need 1070 to 1101. I'll check the head box. Did I say 1071? No. 1051. Not?